On this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast, Escape the Debt Graveyard, Resurrection Tips for Your Finances. So welcome back to this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. My name is Sean Yesner, owner and founder of Yesner Law, and we have spooky George Curbelo, your financial coach. How you doing on this Ooh. Halloween day, Mr. Curbelo? <laughs> uh, it's, it is spooky. Yeah, it's always something to be fearful about, but happy Halloween, brother. How you doing? I I am doing excellent. And those will be stories maybe for future podcast episodes. <laughs> I'll I'll let the listeners in on uh on some some good news as we go. But uh as we record this, we're just beyond uh my son's bar mitzvah. Yay. Um, we had a great time. He did super uh fantastic in the in the ceremony itself. Nice. Um, he collected enough money. So something maybe we could talk about on a future episode. Our I ended money. up I ended up buying buying him with the money that he got a six month uh CD because it was the, the highest interest rate. Gotcha. So in six months, we'll see what interest rates are doing and we'll roll it over. And my plan is just to let it compound on itself for the next five years until he's 18. And that way when he gets to college, he'll have a decent chunk of change to uh you know do what college kids do which is i assume buy beer um <laughs> well maybe a car might be another maybe. another investment at that point but yeah maybe a car, beer yeah. makes sense maybe you gotta have beer money so it makes sense he won't have enough to buy the car but he will have enough to put a nice down payment down and have very very low payments if he wants one there you go uh, so assuming they, assuming the market stays the way it is because you know market. it's been scary as it is here but doing well over here on this side i i that's funny i was on facebook and i got a nice little memory uh we went trick-or-treating a few years back and my my daughter was walking around the neighborhood as a zombie uh so that was that was a nice little picture to see uh in the uh in the in the facebook's and I guess I'll call it the Facebooks because I'm old, um, but it was fun. It was fun to kind of see those kind of memories. And I do love Halloween, the whole dress up. My my wife, we really get into, you know, decorating the house. You got the and I'm, I'm the cheap guy, right? I do little pumpkins here and there that light up and you do the I, I, LEDs are so easy. They're bright and they're, you know, they're easy. And it's like, oh, look at the spider in the window. Like I just I don't do all the other, you know, fancy stuff, but I do enough to just, you know, keep us happy when it comes to yeah. like, come to our house. We got some candy. Come on. Come on. Up. I, I, I saw your post. I did see the zombies um, <laughs> and, and we do the same thing. I I have those um, foam uh, tombstones. Nice. And so I put the foam tombstones out and then I have a couple of pumpkins and then I have one machine that one little uh, light up machine that that projects like a haunted house Love with it. with little bats flying around. And so I project that onto the front of the house. Um, we, we get into the Halloween spirit, too. I've got a couple of LEDs inside the house. They're they're designed for inside a, a pumpkin and a bat hey, and a whatever. So I have those set on timers. Those go on every night. But yeah, we we enjoy. Typically, I cheat. So so we've talked before about um, the fact that I'm in the Gasparilla crew. Yes, it's a ready made Halloween. Yeah, I would say a pirate. You know, it's it's, <laughs> it's a ready. Let me guess. Let me guess what you're going to be this year. <laughs> hey, I don't have to spend any money. I'm buying a new outfit every year. You already did. The, you already did the initial investment, so you're good there. So every year I spend a little bit upgrading. So this this past year, you know, we took that trip to Disney in July. Yep. I went to uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, the ride Pirates of the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and they had there a, a a a metal set of like jail keys, like three jail keys on this metal ring. So right. I picked that up for my costume. So I'll nice. Costume, but, so there uh, you go. You don't even have to worry about, I'm just a generic pirate. I'm actually turning into Jack Sparrow. So there, there, there you, you go. <laughs> Although, you know what I was thinking? You know what I was thinking? I would give out, watch this. You ready for this transition? Let's go. You know what I was going to give out for Halloween this I, year? I get the feeling you're going to scare me with it, but go right ahead. <laughs> I am going to be giving out Magic Mind. <laughs> I love it. Good transition there. Good transition. There you go. Uh, we do want to thank Magic Mind for being a sponsor of the show. Uh, we do appreciate the relationship we have with Magic Mind. Plus, it doesn't hurt that the product is tremendous. Uh, yes. That we, I, I, I've been using the product a lot, um, especially over these last couple of weeks after having all the time off from the storms and 
you get into this habit of just not being real motivated, but that little magic mind shot that I take every morning keeps me energized, keeps me going, uh, doesn't create the sugar high or the sugar crash. And so um, thank you, Magic Mind, for for helping me get more focused. I got to say the one thing from from the Curbelo household itself, my wife is a huge fan of this. She's like, what is this and where can I get more of it? She's been, she's another one that sometimes a little lull during the day. She's a coffee drinker. So she's always like, I need something to pick me up, get me through the day. Or, you know, she's on her feet all day. And for her, um, the, the, again, the elixir, it provides her with, she's like, oh my God, this is gr a great product because I get my boost it keeps me clear and it keeps me um, active for the day itself. So I got to say, if you got my wife, we done. Like this is, you know, I'll, I'll be uh, fortunately, unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm a life uh, lifelong subscriber because that sure. that for me, my wife is like, let's go. So I'm like, you okay. know where she can, you know where she can get more. How do you, how, how do you get more, Sean? You go to magicmind.com slash CD20 for crushing debt 20, CD20. And then you enter that as the code CD20. That'll get you 20% off uh, your first order. And then you can get the subscription. You can just get a one time, although obviously we like it so much. We, we're, we are on the subscription model, but it's magicmind.com slash CD20. And uh, thank you again to Magic Mind for being yes. a, a sponsor of the show. I still see all of their stuff on social media, and I'm trying to decide if it's they're just doing a really, really good job on social media or if it's because we mention them all the time. That's just what happens to pop up in my social media feed. Gotcha. Yeah, and I think I think it's more of uh, we are definitely, uh, you know, promoting and popping up because because it's the crushing debt effect. What are you talking about there? There you go. <laughs> so... I can Speaking be delusional of, even on Halloween. Leave me alone. <laughs> there you go. So escaping the debt graveyard. What are we talking about today? Well, there's a story of a of a of a graveyard. And I have my EBV uh Ecto one and uh ghost busting stuff. Now, nah, dude, again, I, I don't even know where I'm headed with that story, but What's the uh, what? Are, what are some of the things from a debt standpoint? Right, we we know we know the 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 eerie stories when it comes to the debt graveyard. We talk about uh, you know a place of unforgot or forgotten credit cards, old loans, student loans that haunt people who dare to ignore them. That's yeah. that's the debt graveyard. What are what are some of the things that you know story wise when you hear that picture itself? What 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 comes to mind when we see that well, that picture? So here's one of the things that I've actually experienced, not personally, but but with clients that they that they have experienced. I actually we have um, a show that that we have a friendly relationship with. It's called Swipe the Podcast. It's yep. by uh, it's by um um. It's, You're doing it's really a, bad right now. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need, I haven't had my magic mind shot yet today. <laughs> Polly Bauer is there the host go. of of uh, Swipe the Podcast, and it's all about credit and credit cards, and and so it, it it's a really good um, uh, sister show to us in terms of getting rid of debt. And and Polly's fantastic. Polly's got a ton of experience in the industry. I was a guest on her show. Must have been like five, six, seven years ago, mm -hmm. talking about zombie debt. Mm -hmm. And so it's a good, good topic to bring up during Halloween. Zombie debt is basically debt that has risen from the grave and is trying to collect again. So debt that is however many years old, five years old, eight years old, 10 years yeah. old, 15 years old, and, and you've forgotten about it. And then all of a sudden it pops up out of the blue and you get a wage garnishment, you get a bank account garnishment, you get something because this debt has basically risen from the grave and is trying to collect money from you. The problem is what, what I'm thinking is going on under Florida law, judgments are good for 20 years. Now, they're wow. only they're only liens against property for 10 years and then they can be renewed for another 10 years. But in terms of the judgment itself, that's good for 20. So if you had a judgment against you 15 years ago, 18 years ago, they can still try to collect on that judgment even now, 15, 16, 18, 19 years later. And I think what's going on is the economy has kind of shifted where 
some of these creditors are feeling the pinch of inflation. Right. And some of these creditors are going back and saying, well, wait a minute. I wonder if the borrower's situation from that debt 15 years ago, I wonder if the borrower's situation has improved financially. It's changed. Right, or, right. You know, before where they may have been head of household and exempt from a wage garnishment, maybe those, maybe the kids are grown and out of the house and now they are subject to a wage garnishment. So I'm starting to get more and more and more calls from people that, you know, this debt was from 2010 and now it's 2024 and they're still trying to collect. Well, if it was from 2010, they have until 2030. Right. So there's the, the right, statue, statue of limitations that are still applied when it comes to the debt itself. Right. So that that makes sense in regards to you because you think it's dead. Right. You're thinking that it was written off itself. But how, how would you know if it was written off? Like, how would you know that, it you know, like the statute of limitations still exists? I mean, me ignoring it. How would I know <laughs> if I would say, oh, yeah, yeah, that I thought that was gone. And all of a sudden they're still coming to get it. Yeah, you, you may not know. You may have totally forgotten about it. Yeah. The loan may have been sold off a couple of times right. to, different, to different creditors, but that's really the challenge is that – So, and, and, and you actually hit on a very good misconception is that what if the debt was written off? Well, a lot of people will call me and say, that debt was charged off on my credit. Why is the bank still coming after it? Right. All that charged off means on someone's credit is that it's not reporting on credit anymore. It doesn't mean the debt is no longer owed. It just means it's not being reported on credit. So saying the debt's been charged off, I'm good, lulls people into a false sense of security where, like I said, 5, 10, 15, 19 years down the road. I actually saw an example a, a couple of months ago. My understanding was the judgment was good for 20 years. And after 20 years, the statute of limitations expired. There's actually a body of case law where when you get close to that 20 year mark, you can basically re up or re sue on the judgment to re up it for another 20 years. Now, I Ooh. don't see that. I don't see it happen. It's this is the first time I've seen it happen in my 20 something years of practicing. Sure. sure. Um, and and probably my guess is that it doesn't happen a lot because after 20 years, the creditors may have forgotten about the debt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'd imagine the amount of credit uh, and transactions that happen between now and then. Yeah, it's like if they're still trying to hit hit up, is there a certain amount that you think that they would, you know, like if it was ten, fifteen thousand dollars, that's different from like five hundred bucks, right? Or would they be paying yeah. to still go after that five hundred? Well, it's, you know, the interesting thing here is that you're right. If it's if the more money it is, the more the creditor is likely to go after it. Right. But I also think, ironically, the lower it is, the more likely. Because, for example, yeah. if I if I repossess somebody's car or a creditor repossesses somebody's car um, for a debt, not for the car loan, but yeah. but for some other kind of debt. And by the time that car is processed, auctioned, sold, the creditor is only going to get what, $1,000, $1,500, right. 2000 right. something small. Well, if you've got a $15,000 debt, is it really to your benefit as the creditor to take someone's car away for one or $2,000? No. But if you're owed $500, there it may go. make sense to go after a car, even if you're only going to collect 1000 or two. As the creditor, it may make more sense. Some of this may also be driven by the type of creditor. So sure. you know, Visa, Chase, Discover, they may not go after stuff where... If I loan somebody money and personally, I may be more likely to, to continue to chase after it. We, I just went yesterday. Uh, I was at a deposition. My client was being deposed. My client was the tenant. She ended up getting evicted. And the creditor, the landlord sued her for what he alleged to be damages to the home. And so they were deposing my client to figure out what assets do you have that we can try to go after to repair the interesting thing is the landlord uh, died right after the lawsuit was filed mm. and so at first we thought great this thing's going away right but then the daughter who is the personal representative of the estate kept going with the lawsuit on behalf of the estate because now she's wow. thinking hey if i can get money from this woman into the I estate that's more money for me from from dad sure 
So there are those kinds of considerations that play into it, you know, and, and uh, now my, my client is not really collectible. My client doesn't have enough money or, or assets or anything, sure. I think to really be collectible. So it's funny. I said on the way out, I said to the opposing attorney, yeah, give me, give me a call. And, and after the way that the questions that he asked and, and the way my client answered the questions, I think he knows that um, there's no chance of recovery here. Right. Uh, Got to be realistic with some of this as well. So that that totally makes sense. Right. Let me ask this. What I'm kind of reading as well, you know, zombie debt is legally uncollectible. What does that mean? Like legally so, uncollectible. There is another version of zombie debt. So when I first said zombie debt, it's debt that that's kind of gone away. Yeah. Um, but it's still within that 20 year period. Yeah. There is another category of zombie debt. So let's say that the the debt was eliminated in a bankruptcy. Right. And the creditor sold that debt to somebody else. And that creditor doesn't do their due diligence to know that or or maybe it was, it's sold, you know, maybe Visa says, "Hey, here's a portfolio of a million dollars of bad right. debt that's comprised of, you know, a hundred different debtors." And somebody buys that for 200 grand because if they can collect even half of it, they'll make 500 grand. Um, but if any of that debt was discharged in a bankruptcy and the creditor that buys it tries to collect it, now it's debt that has in essence gotcha. ri risen from the grave. Ooh, that that was that's scary because you're thinking like yeah. that that might be you're thinking, oh, we did the we did this properly, we thought these things were managed. And you're right. We're assuming institutions have their things together to be able to get some of that stuff. But you you never know that that again that could be a true you know zombie yeah. you know, zombie debt that comes up out and, of the grave. Gotcha. And if if something like that happens, I would say call call me, call an attorney, call yeah. somebody because it could be as simple as a call to the creditor that says, "Hey, here's the bankruptcy gotcha. discharge. You stop collecting it." And it could be as serious as. You've now violated the bankruptcy discharge, the bankruptcy injunction, the bankruptcy stay. Right. Now we're going to sue you for improperly trying to collect that debt. So it, it could it could span that whole gamut of of different um, possibilities. So if you get called, if, if you're listening to the show and you get called yeah. and somebody says, hey, we're going to try to collect blah, blah, blah debt reach out, reach out to me, reach out to an attorney, reach out to somebody. Right. You may not have to pay it or you may have to pay it. It'll, it'll depend. Just depends on the situation, but I, I get, and that's where for me, I'm more of like, if you ignore it, it could get, it, it could make its way back on where it's impacting your credit score as well. Like it may come back on your credit report depending on the situation too. But th that's where, again, don't ignore it. Have the, con especially if you know or feel like it should be, something that is, you know, not entitled to collection, having that conversation just to make sure I'd imagine will will at least put your mind at ease. Don't ignore because yeah. that's that seems to be what gets us into trouble in these instances. Well, and I'll I'll, I'll tell you another scary story. <laughs> if you if you ignore it, even if it was a debt that was eliminated in bankruptcy. Yep. And you ignore it and the creditor gets a judgment now because you ignored it. Now you've got another judge saying it's a valid debt. Now Ooh. you probably could be able to get up to get it all unwound eventually. But now you've got the state court judge that says it's a valid debt competing against the bankruptcy judge that says it was eliminated debt and right. it just caused a big mess. So if you think it's a zombie debt, don't ignore it. Just call don't someone, ignore. call anybody. Have a conversation to make sure the the other thing is okay good but how do you then deal with zombie debt then if that's the case when we talk about like we you know do we if it comes up having the conversation is one thing but some people automatic well i'll just pay it again assume, do we assume you pay it like like what what are you know some of the tips that we want to give people where it's like if something comes out of the grave do you chop what? its head off uh do you give it money do you give it cab <laughs> money what do you do what do you do with that you take out your uh, your bat wrapped in barbed wire and no, you um, what you do, I mean, unfortunately, some of this you may have to go back in time. But what I right. would say is whenever you resolve a debt, whenever you pay off that debt, you you settle it, you do whatever it is you're going to do with that debt. Save a copy of everything, even if you mm -hmm. want to scan it and throw it in a computer file somewhere, right. save a copy of it. Now, if it's if it's a result of a bankruptcy discharge, we can pull those records from the bankruptcy court. 
But if it's a settlement of a debt or, or something like that, save those records because then if the creditor does try to come after it, you can say, hey, here are all the records. Here's the letter where you said you'd take, right. you know, 20%. Here's my check for the 20%. Here's that my check was cashed. And, and you can protect yourself that way. If you don't have that, then it's, it's you, unfortunately, if you, what I try to tell people a lot of times, and, and, you know, this is, I think this is a quote from, I think this is a quote from a few good men, the Tom Cruise movie. I think <laughs> okay. this is where I got that quote. Um, and I, I don't remember exactly how the quote goes, but it's something like it, the law is not about your what's right and wrong. The law is about what you can prove. Right. So even if you have settled that debt or paid that debt, if you can't prove it, you may have to pay it again, unfortunately. So that's, you know, it's, it's not a great answer, but the only answer I can think of is, you know, at the time you're paying and settling and wheeling and dealing, save all that stuff. Yeah. Save it. CYA. Somewhere. CYA. Right. In, in those instances, it's good to have good notes, good who you spoke to. Uh, you're right. The, the, the collectors have to verify debt in writing. If it's been resolved, it should be done in writing, all of those kind of things. So it's just keeping good records in these instances can help you. And, and I would, I would think you would recommend too, like keep it for lifelong. Like it should mm -hmm. be part of your passport. It should be part of like your, you know, again, your gun, if you're going to put that in the, in the same safe, Whatever you need, that all of that, those are important documents because, again, if if any of these zombie things come out, you, you know, you have your bat with wire, you have your gun, you know, for those, you know, for the zombies, and now you have also for the zombie debt, your your debt collection, your 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 information that's needed to make those things go away. Right. You have your what? Wooden wooden stakes are vampires. Wooden stakes are vampires, but you know, garlic stake to garlic. the head, stake to the head for a zombie as well. So we can stake we can, to the head for a zombie. Garlic is vampires. Yes, what indeed. Are, what are werewolves? Uh, what I remember was the silver bullet. Was That's the, right. Silver yeah. bullet for werewolves. So you got to make sure you have your silver bullets for the werewolves. There you go. <laughs> I, I, I'm into, you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So they, we won't we won't admit to that. But, they, you know, it's a little thing. So. Hey, every <laughs> I, I think every guy our age was into Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It was a great show. Well written. I just want to say that right now. <laughs> yeah. There <Whatever>. was writing. <laughs> there was. There, there was dialogue. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, so last. Hey, I'm single. I'm single. I can say that. He's stuff, single and, and hot to mingle. The <laughs> uh, let me let me ask this from a communication standpoint: Is there anything as a person? Can we say anything in communication with collectors and things like that that could get us into trouble that might open up the 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 window as well? Because uh, I know there's a lot of like ignoring is one thing, but if I'm on a call or having this conversation, is there anything I need to avoid in saying as well? Yeah. That, could, that could also make make things, you know, sticking foot in mouth is seems to something I do very well. So I just want to make sure. Foot in mouth disease. <laughs> um, so I, I'll attack it from the other perspective, which is. I've always said I've said I think I've written blogs about it. I think there's there's mm -hmm. old podcast episodes about it that. Right. Debt settlement ain't poker. You know, th there are times where I will bluff. And if there are any creditors listening, I've never done it to you. But there are times when I will bluff a creditor here or there um, to try to get a good settlement for my client. But sure. if I've got the winning hand, like, like with this lady at the deposition yesterday, if I've got the winning hand, I'm going to show it. If my client's only income is Social Security, that's exempt. In Florida, they own their home. That's exempt. Yeah. Um, you know, now even cars, there's a five thousand dollar exemption limit on cars. If if my client is a single mom or a single dad, yeah, uh, with a job who gets a little bit of social security from you know whatever spouse passed away, they get a little yeah, bit yeah. of social security. They have a job. They have two minor kids. They own a home. They rent. Uh, you know whatever. They've got no expensive jewelry they don't have a yeah. side hustle llc they don't have any yeah. of that stuff yeah i am screaming that from the mountaintops when i am trying to settle with the creditor makes sense to tell the creditor look there's no there's, there's no pot of gold at the end of this rainbow right. right and and enough creditors now know in fact i was talking to one of them i was talking to a creditor's attorney two or three days ago explaining my client's situation he had 
He had, his house had been flooded in Helene. His business had been flooded. Uh, he hasn't had any, any business income since, you know, the, the Helene storm wow. Sorry to and, hear that. and the creditor's attorney knowing who I was said, Oh, so you're, you're queuing up a bankruptcy for him. So it's nice to have that kind of reputation amongst creditors <laughs> attorneys. That's okay. That's a, uh, you know, when you're kind of a big deal, that's what happens, brother. You know, it's, <laughs> there's someone posted, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to find it and maybe try to post it in connection with the podcast. A buddy of mine created a meme years ago and it says opposing counsel. It's got a picture of uh, Atticus Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird. Yes. Okay. And at the top, it says opposing counsel is Sean Yesner. And at the bottom, it says, I guess I'll concede. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nice that was early it. on so nice that's it's got a reputation that's uh that's only grown since then so that's awesome so that's but to go back to your question i think yes if if the creditors are asking you for things well number one if it's if it's things they're asking for through the court proceeding you have an, an obligation to be honest yeah. uh number one but number two before you answer that stuff i would get with an attorney to say you know, should I disclose this? How yeah. should I disclose this? You know, I, if you've got stuff that's not exempt, you know, if if you've got a, a, a stock account, you know, just a regular, I use this to kind of day trade account. Yeah, that's yeah. not, it's not a retirement account. It's not exempt. We want to be careful. You know, eventually we're going to have to disclose it to the creditor, but we want to be careful about how we do that. Correct. Um. So, you know, maybe we, maybe we disclose it on the day that the market is down. You know, I <laughs> gotcha. I don't know. Um, but we need to be careful about how we disclose that kind of stuff. So that would be my answer is, yeah, you do need to be careful about how you disclose things to uh, creditors. Um, so if if you have questions, again, call me, call a local yeah. attorney. Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, I mean, I got to say, uh, I'm a little scared, uh, uh, you know, to to manage these kind of things. So I'm glad that I just pay my bills on time and uh, try not to rack up some new bills uh, at the end of the day itself. But, uh, dude, uh, I, I, you know, it's one of those kind of things that, you know, we don't want to bury our heads in the sand in some cases. And I think in some cases we need to reach out for that help and support because it's yeah. like some either want to ignore it or we don't need that help. And it's like, eh, it's best to be sure than, you know, having some of these things rear their ugly head years when you're thinking everything has been safe and good so I, yeah i, I think that's like that. i think that's the best advice is just don't ignore it you yeah. you don't you don't necessarily have to call the creditor about it right. um before or until you call an attorney or even you know if it's something where they're they're at just the beginning stages of it they can call you you can try to help them uh, you know, with their budget to work their way out of it. So right. definitely talk to somebody about it, whether it's me, whether it's George, whether yeah. it's somebody like us, don't ignore it. Um, because the, it, it will, it will come back and try to eat your brain <laughs> if, if you ignore it. Brains. Brains. Love it. Love it. Well, brother, you know, I, I gotta say, uh, we, we, we ended up on the other side of the episode and, uh, I think we're okay. I think we're we're yeah. ready. We're ready to deal with the Walking Dead. For for those watching, I am I'm dressed as Iron Man. I had to. We had to. <laughs> we had to dress in uh, in costume for for B and I this morning, and so uh, I went. I decided not to go full on pirate for B and I. I just threw on an Iron Man t shirt. I told the I told the uh, the guy that owns the CrossFit gym in our chapter. I said, I finally got a six pack. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, it's in the car, in the cooler. <laughs> no, the Iron Man looks, the Iron Man shirt. Look at that, look at that six pack right oh, there. Oh, jeez, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> look at that six pack. I'm glad we're an audio podcast. <laughs> uh, just kidding, just kidding. So again, we want to thank our friends at Magic Mind who do yes. sponsor the show. Uh, so definitely support them if you want to. Uh, order a, a magic mind it's magicmind.com slash cd20 and then enter the code cd20 that gets you 20 percent off your first order uh, if you want to support us if you want me to buy something other than a, a pirate costume for halloween <laughs> you can go to patreon.com slash crushing debt mm -hmm. that's a patreon page for the show uh, also sam cohen um, thank you, Sam. Sam sent uh, my son a, a present for his bar mitzvah. So Aww. thank you, Sam, for that. 
Uh, Sam with Attorneys First. If you're an attorney or title company and you want malpractice coverage, contact Sam at attorneysfirst.com. Thank you very much, Sam. Anything Anything else? I'd say this is a great episode. Nice little fun. Uh, yeah. Got, I think I learned something. And at the same time, now I'm I'm ready to move forward with stuff. So I, I, I appreciate your brother as usual. Yeah, thank you, sir. You ready to tackle those zombies now? I think so. I think so. Or and hand out some some nice chocolates so, and candies throughout the uh you know throughout the season. Do your kids still trick or treat? I mean, mine's are twenty one and sixteen, so so uh well one's gonna go get alcohol as part of the uh as part of the festivities. <laughs> the the younger one will probably uh hand out candy. I think we don't I don't think we go around and to be honest with you, if my kid hangs out with me on Halloween, I'd be a little worried. I'm like, go go get some friends and find <laughs> something to do, you know, like get out of here. So did your did your wife go through the candy when they did trick or treat looking yeah. for looking for razors in the Milky Way bars? Oh, we no that when I was again in, in New York that was the big that was the big like kind of thing. Uh, my mom maybe you know did it one year, but then it was like yeah, it's not a big deal. Like it's <laughs> whatever if you bite on it, just don't bite too hard. You'll be fine. <laughs> she doesn't care. If, she doesn't care if you swallow the random she razor was, blade. She, she she knew I wasn't that stupid. I'm good. <laughs> My parents, my parents went through our candy every, and there, and there was a definite candy tax that, that my oh, of sister course. and I had Well, that I, you know, we did, we do inspect it, but I think there's, there's a, a hidden motive behind the inspection of the candy. What's the, what's your go-to candy Halloween? What's, what's your go-to? Uh, dude, I, I am a sucker for Twizzlers and Swedish oof. fish. Oh, Swedish fish, that, that, that red dye 40 boy. Oof, that thing is so good. It's, I, I give you, I'm more of a chocolate. I do like my little three musketeers and those mini Milky Waves. <laughs> yeah, I love to die for, to die for. So, yeah. Milky Ways, Milk Duds, Ugh. anything with caramel in it. So good. Uh, I'm good for. There you go. So. Well, there you go. It looks like we'll, uh, we'll do some candy inspections and, uh, make sure some of those get, uh, pulled out from the, uh, you know, from the and parents give the full size to the kids. They the the other yeah, don't cheat. Appreciate out. It. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go to I actually gotta go to Sam's probably today or tomorrow on my way home and stock up for Halloween. So we'll see. Same same here, same here. Well, so yeah, um, happy Halloween, sir, and happy uh, Halloween to the to everyone else as well, and be safe out there. Uh, and uh, you know, definitely and, uh, we'll catch you next time for sure. Yeah, at the end of the at the what is it at the end of the month we. We hope you have more money rather than at the end of the money, you have more month. Love. And we will talk to you in next week's episode. Happy Halloween.